Lead is out. The race is on. And what is this? David Pearson, a brash young rookie whose 1961 Pontiac was the fastest qualifier in the field, has thrown caution to the wind and cut inside in a swirl of dust as he attempts to beat the leaders into the first turn. And suddenly, something does happen. Rubber goes flying as Pearson's right rear tire blows on the back stretch. Pearson hangs on, and with sparks flying as he struggles down the home stretch of final time, takes the checkered flag. What a race! What a day for David Pearson and mechanic Ray Fox! And the checkered flag for David Pearson. That's the fifth rim this year for David Pearson. David Pearson on the track has been signaled to come in, and they're telling him now to stop for fuel. That's Glenn Wood of the famous Wood Brothers crew, the owners and those who maintain this magnificent Mercury. come across the start finish line. He's gonna win the race. He's gonna win it spinning. As he, I believe, will take the checkered flag. No, he did not make it. Teddy has his car going. Pearson's gonna win it. Oh, back to the table. He wins the race. Man, my eyes are really burning. There's only one way I know to stop that. Put it when the eye drops. You get the irritation out of your eyes, put it away. Oh, and, and there's an eight. David Pearson on the pit lane has lost a wheel. David Pearson's got, oh, there's two wheels lying down the pit road here. Both his outside wheels have come off. The McShack Van Pillow out front, David went out, not knowing the inside wheels were to be changed, and they came off and he crashed to the inside wall. You've been in a slump this year. Does it get, does it get to you? It really does. In fact, it, I've, I've even thought about quitting at time or two, getting mad about things, but uh, this year has actually, Chris, been the worst year I've had since I've been racing. David, you've been around a long time. What about that big step backward where you put the helmet on the shelf at home? No, that, that might be a while yet. ...by wrecked race cars. A crash here on the main straightaway involving Neil Bonnet, Dick Trickle, Rob Moroso. Also involved was Darrell Waldrop, but he is moving away and headed toward the pits. But three cars are heavily damaged right along the front stretch. Neil Bonnet in trouble originally. Well, what happened to the car, but he hit coming off turn four, and we see the guys all trying to dodge him. Moroso and Darrell Waldrop get together. Now, they have just cut the roof off of Neil Bonnet's car in an effort to extract him from his wrecked race car. So we just cut the roof off of it, and they're going to take him out. I mean, he's sitting there talking. I think he's OK. tough it is here in Winston Cup racing and uh, how easy he had it when back when he ran you know he had to beat like three or four cars and that was it now you've got uh, 20 or 30 cars you've got to outrun and uh, I told him that if he did drive the car that he would qualify that he'd probably be so far back in the pack that he had to get a cab you know and get to take him back there at the start the start of the race but uh, you know I, I don't know uh, he, he's, he's a pretty smart fella he'll make up his own mind Pearson climbed behind the wheel of the Wood Brothers Ford for a few practice laps. The team needs a driver for the Charlotte Winston Cup race a week from Sunday because Neil Bonnet is still recovering from injuries. Pearson and the Wood Brothers won 11 straight poles at Charlotte from 1973 to 78 and three races. In recent years, David has been overseeing his son Larry's Winston Cup effort and hasn't given serious consideration to driving. But then the call from Glenn Wood. When he called me, I knew he was serious about it, you know, and he asked me did I want to try it and, and uh, consider running it. And so uh, it kind of shocked me to start with. I didn't know what to say, and so uh, I told him he would have to think about it. And, of course, uh, that afternoon, Eddie called me, and I told him we'd go ahead and try it and come up here and test it anyway and, and see how the car is and see how it feels and, of course, see how I feel about it and, and make a decision later. I think he's, he's like probably I am. He sits around and sees some of these boys run. He said, ain't no way they can beat me. You know what I mean? So he's out there to try it again. But he'll have a good time. He'll really enjoy it. 
I can feel it in my back, you know. And so if it gets worse, and naturally I don't want to run the car. I don't want to make a fool out of myself and get out there and say run 100 miles and have to get out of the car. I want to be able to run at all if I do it. So uh, I'm just going to have to run a while and later on just see how it feels. His speeds were highly competitive. Leonard said, we, well, we run good, run real good. They was, they was happy, you know. And the next morning, I couldn't even get out of the bed. My back was hurting so bad. So I had to call them and tell them that, you know, it wouldn't be right to come up there and run, start the race. You know, it wouldn't be right for them. It also wouldn't be right for the fans. And I says, I just can't do it, you know. And of course, I didn't even think about it, but the press got onto it and said, well, if you can't run here, where can you run? I said, well, I don't know, you know. They said, does that mean you're going to retire? And I didn't want to ever say it, but uh, they forced me into saying it. And that was the hardest word I ever made in my life, try to say. Back problems from other years were aggravated, and he wasn't going to go out and run second best. Once a champion, always a champion.